JoJo's Bizarre Adventure video games can sometimes be a pretty rare affair. They might not always be the greatest games of all time, but they are always interesting, and at least to me, are worth checking out if you're a fan of the series. However, these games that I'm about to talk about in this video, eh, I don't know. Gotcha games, everyone loves them, except me. I don't. They're mostly free video games that often revolve around digital collectibles, similar to that of a toy vending machine. The catch is that you can either use in-game currency to collect them, or out of game currency, like your savings. They're video games aimed at slowly draining your wallet. Most of them are designed so that you're encouraged to pay actual money. Not all of them, but most. They can be very predatory to consumers, and if you don't believe me, most of the highest grossing mobile games are of this genre. So of course, with JoJo being as big of a brand as it is, it's had its fair share of gacha-based games. Three notable examples to be exact, all developed by Bandai Namco Entertainment, my mans. For this section, I'm gonna take a brief look at each of these games, but bear with me, I'm not too familiar on the format since I personally don't really enjoy enjoy it. I would normally tell you to avoid these like the plague if you plan on trying to save money, but one, they were never available in English-speaking territories, and two, all three of them have had their servers shut down and are no longer available to play regardless. So in other words, you're safe. For now. <laughs> JoJo's Pitter Patter Pop this was a puzzle game developed for smartphones and was released alongside the Part 5 anime adaptation in 2018. Despite having one of the dumbest fucking names of all time, JoJo's Pitter Patter Pop has one of the most unique and aesthetically pleasing art styles I've seen from a JoJo spinoff. While most games attempt to emulate the style of their source material, Pop goes in a completely different direction, instead opting for a more cutesy art style, and I think that's pretty neat. Given that JoJo tends to skew on a much more mature and dark tone, seeing all of these characters as chibis with a much more vibrant color palette is pretty adorable. I also in general just really enjoy this interpretation, especially with the more simplified eyes and the proportions of the characters. Never before has a serial killer looked this adorable. No, 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 no. The basic gameplay revolves around matching tiles and that that's it just matching tiles there's some more to it than that obviously but there's only so much you can do to alter a tile matching game at its core honestly the best part about this thing's existence is that even if it isn't around anymore people were able to rip various art and assets from it and repost them online they mostly just represent characters and events from parts one through five but there's plenty there to look through a lot of these would make for some really great profile pictures or social media banners if you're interested, and they're just a simple Google search away. Also, for some reason, Dyer of all characters got unique art and animations here. I have no idea why he was included, but hey, Dyer fans, rejoice! The Thundercross split attack continues to be invincible! Thundercross split attack! Stardust Shooters just like the previous, this was another free-to-play game developed for smart devices. However, unlike its contemporaries, it still currently maintains the title of the longest active JoJo mobile game, running for seven years. This game is JoJo, but with pogs! If you know what that means, then good for you, because I do not. I'll be honest, I don't really comprehend how this game plays. Even after I watched gameplay and read a description, I had a hard time understanding what I was even looking at. I'm probably just stupid and brain dead after writing so much for this video. I may not be the best person to cover this, but uh, I'm all you got right now, so I'll try my best. From what I can tell, the game is played by equipping medals based on characters from the series and just kind of bumping them into other ones and then you win. Not much is too interesting about this, but again, probably the best thing about this game post-mortem is the sheer amount of high-quality JoJo art it spawned. A lot of it is reused assets from other games and manga, but damn that key art do be looking fine as hell. Look at those colors and shading, man. Jesus. Oh wait, no, sorry, not you, Jesus. I didn't mean to... You, you know what, forget it.
JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Diamond Records. This is probably the most interesting entry on this brief list. Releasing in 2017, this was a free mobile game that focused on 3D action style gameplay and featured content from the first five parts of JoJo. Diamond Records, at least for a mobile game, was fairly impressive on both a visual standpoint and gameplay wise. It originally focused on a sort of free roam beat em up style of gameplay wherein you could team up with your favorite characters for various quests and objectives on a variety of levels. I actually remember the buzz surrounding the community when it was first coming out, crossing my fingers and somehow hoping that it gets released in the West. Spoiler alert, it did not. I am in constant pain. And sadly, I would never get the chance to even try out the game because a year later, Bandai Namco made this baffling decision to completely change everything about the game? I'm not exaggerating here, they... They actually did this. In one of the strangest gameplay updates I've ever seen a video game undergo, in 2018, Diamond Records got a massive overhaul entitled Diamond Records Reversal. This wasn't just a content edition or a small update. This was a complete makeover of the base game. Instead of the free roam combat that many players had enjoyed, everything was now constricted to simplistic turn-based RPG fights. The entire way the game functioned was now totally different, and while progress was transferred over, many character stats and balancing with the new way the game functioned was jank as fuck and people hated it. Just to clarify for a second, I'm not saying that turn-based fights are necessarily bad, I'm just saying that when you buy Minecraft, you don't want to play Pokemon. This is not what people signed up for when they first started playing, and what's worse is that the free roam beat em up style game that they actually wanted no longer existed. Instead of making a different game, Bandai Namco just completely changed an existing one, and because of that, Diamond Records went on a downward spiral that eventually ended up killing it. In 2019, it was announced that the game's servers would eventually close down for good, and later that year, they did just that. I have no earthly idea why Bandai Namco thought this was a good idea, but some have labeled it as a quick cash grab, knowing that the new mechanics of the game would push players further to spend more money on it since the original version of the game wasn't profitable enough as it was. Honestly, one of the sadder endings to one of these games. Though it is worthy of noting, it does seem like there's a fan-made revival in the works that is fittingly called Diamond Records Revival. Currently, you can find a download to the demo of it on itch.io. I played a bit of it on my own time, and while it's a bit rough around the edges and I'm unsure how it stacks up to the original, I'm glad that a project like this exists at all, and I'm always down to support fan efforts like it. It hasn't received any updates in a while, so the creator may have moved on to other things, but if you like what you see, I would check it out. Link can be found in the doobly-doo like all the other stuff I've been linking. Hey, if you like this video and you want to see more, it's actually just a smaller part of a much larger trivia series that I've been hosting on my main channel. So if you want to see me talk about more JoJo content and be an absolute clown, check out the link at the top of the description for the full playlist.